Welcome to the third and final installment of our belt drive tutorial. In part two, we focused on principal animation and we made our wheels and belt rotate at the correct speeds in order to perfectly synchronize with each other. However, at present, our belt is lacking in dynamic life. It doesn't look particularly real and we need to do some further work in order to improve things. You may recall that in tutorial number one, I mentioned a couple of points that I'd placed in the upper and lower portions of our belt spline in the middle here. I said at the time that we would return to them in tutorial number three. And these are the points that we're going to use to make the belt appear to vibrate as it rotates around both wheels. And if we just move them, you can see that the belt actually flexes and does appear to be made of elastic. So this is going to look highly realistic when these points are animated. It's going to be a great looking effect for sure. We'll just change back to our main 3D view and we'll get the Expresso Editor open and start work. The first thing we need to do in order to start this process is bring in a new node that we've not seen before. So we'll come to new node in our menus, Expresso, General, and it's a noise node that we're going to bring into the Expresso Editor. At the output stage, the noise node simply has a noise port. And there's no options for adding any more ports here at the output stage. At the input stage, you can add a number of different ports, depending on what your needs actually are. But we don't need to worry about these for now. We don't need any of them. So we'll set that up there. And then if we come over to our node properties, we have a noise type. And in the menu, we've got four different options here. I'm going to leave it at the top one here, just the simple noise. Feel free to experiment with these yourself. We have a positive only checkbox here, but leave it unchecked because we want the noise to generate positive and negative numbers so that the belt splines points actually move up and down above and below their start positions. So that's why we leave this box unchecked. Moving on to our parameters, we have scale, frequency and amplitude. I'm not going to go into too much detail with these here. I'm just going to set them up and you can experiment with them at your leisure. So the scale I'm going to leave exactly as it is. We'll leave that as a number one in there. The frequency I'm going to change to a value of 30. And I'm going to change the amplitude to 5. And that's our first noise node taken care of. We have two points that we're going to manipulate. So we need a second noise node. So we'll just copy and paste that one down there. And here I'll leave the scale at 1 again. The frequency I'll change to 27 and the amplitude 3, so that there's a slight difference between them, which should add to the realism. We now need to call upon two math nodes, so I'll bring in number 1. The first one does need to be an add. The second needs to be a subtract, and we'll get these set up. We'll plug the noise output ports here into the inputs of our math adds. And then the next port of call is to change the second math add to a subtract. And we're going to add a value of 35 to the first noise node there and subtract a value of 37 from the second one. And the reason we're going to do this, if I just select my belt spline again and go into points, as we can see now, our point here, if you look at it, is directly above the central point of the world. And when we're working with these points, we're working in global position mode. And that's very important to remember. So our point is directly above ground zero. In other words, it's only moved in the Y axis. So its start point is actually 35 meters above ground zero. Similarly, with the other point, the point position here is 37 meters below ground zero. So in other words, its start point is minus 37. It's actually minus 37.624 we've got there, but 37 is the round number that we're going to use. So that's the reason for doing those things. That's our add and subtract taken care of. The next thing we need to bring in is an adapter node for each point. And these are going to be reels to vectors. And as I've mentioned, we're working with position Y. So the position Y is the one that we're going to be manipulating here. So we'll place that in there. We'll just copy that over there. Drop this down here and put that one in there. And 
our x and z values are already zero, so we can leave those as they are. In both nodes there, they can stay at zeros. So that's perfect. To finish off, we need to pull in our bout spline here. We'll just place it up here and give it an object port. And then we need two point nodes, which we've not seen before. So we come to new node expresso general and select point node. And we'll set these up one beneath the other. We need two, so we'll do the same copy and paste and place this down here. And the point node starts life with an object port and a point index at the input stage and on the output stage a point count and a point position. We can add further ports or just one port, point normal, which we don't need at the output stage. At the input stage we can add a point position and we definitely need this one. So we'll add those two to there, like so. Before we go any further and start connecting things up, the first thing we need to do is work out the point index values for both nodes. And we'll do this by selecting our structure menu here. At the moment we've got the bottom point selected and we can see that its index is 3. If we also hold shift down and select our top point we can see that its index is 7. So it's point 3 and 7. They're the indexes we need to work with. So the top one is point index 7 and our bottom point index is 3. And those are now set up and it's important to do that first because if you don't you end up working with point 0 and you don't want to do that. We can now connect the outputs of our reels to vectors to our point positions and don't worry about the fact that they've turned yellow. The reason that's happened is because at the moment they're a bit confused. They're saying okay you've given us a point index and you've given us a point position. However, where are the points? Because we haven't got an object to work with that has these points in them. And that's because we haven't yet plugged in this port here. We haven't plugged our belt splines output port into the input port there. And that's what we're going to do now. And as soon as we do, they turn white again and everything's okay. And that's our expression completely set up. So let's run the timeline and see what actually happens. We'll just select that and sort that out there. And as you can see, our belt suddenly comes to life. It's vibrating as if it's made from an elastic material. And it looks great, doesn't it? It really does make a world of difference and it gives that belt life. Superb. Really pleased with that. OK. So that basically completes our tutorial. But there's one more thing I'm going to do here. As we've got three separate expressions on one tag here, on one Espresso tag, what I'm going to do is add remark nodes, which we've not used before. So Espresso General and come down to Remark. And the remarks, as their name suggests, allow you to make comments as to what the actual nodes are actually doing. So what we'll do in our comment box down here in our node properties, for our first one we'll say return spline length because that's what we did with the first expression there. So that's that one done, return spline length. And then I have actually set two others up over here and I've actually cheated just to save time really. So I've got a couple of other remarks that I'm going to put in here. So I'll place that one above there and that one here. And as you can see I've already changed their title colours to green. So we'll do the same with this one. We'll just change that to a green there and make it the same. And I've put here rotate wheels and belt texture which is what we did with our second expression and our last expression cause upper and lower belt points to vibrate in order to simulate elasticity. So remarks can be useful if you need to remind yourself in the future of what you've actually done. So you can use them. Though I must confess I never do but uh, I'm pretty lax with these things really but that doesn't mean that you have to be. Anyway to recap, because the tutorial is basically at an end now, we've taken some noise and we've added and subtracted it to the upper and lower points of our belt spline, which are placed in the centre portions of it. 
We've then passed these values into reals to vector nodes. And then from there, we've taken a vector and passed it to the point position of each of our two points, having set up their point indexes first. Very, very important. And of course, we've got the two points from the actual belt spline. So it's quite a straightforward expression when you actually analyze how it works. But for now, that just about completes everything here. So I hope you've enjoyed the tutorial and had as much fun doing this one as I have. I really think this looks absolutely superb now. And I love working these things out and working with point level animation. But anyway, for now, I'll see you again shortly on the next tutorial.